Hello everyone, I'm Hel, the vocalist of Ukrainian metal band Ignea and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to have one of my The Bandsman talks that I do here. These talks are uh, mostly about everything that bands are doing to get out of the basement, namely to grow, to you know, become worldwide famous and blah blah blah. I do these talks mostly with metal artists and we speak about uh, managing the band, uh, producing merch, um, about our relations with labels, booking agencies and like different representatives in the music industry, um, about all the struggles that we're facing in our everyday band lives and everything that um, comes to our mind. Today's guest uh, is Giulia, the vocalist of Italian melodic metal band Five Rand. And here's our talk. Uh, thank you so much for agreeing for this call. Um, You're welcome, my pleasure. <laughs> really glad to have you here. Um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of your band. Uh, I really like oh. your songs. So for me, it's a real pleasure. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. I discovered your band not so um, long ago, but I really love what you're doing and I'm really interested in um, having this conversation. And um, yeah. the, first, the first question that I have, it's a, quite a common question on my channel. And can you tell me how your band functions and who is in charge of what in okay. your band? Uh, well, um... I do a lot of stuff for my band. For example, I manage all the social media. Um, I, I manage also the uh, booking uh, with uh, our manager. So I'm in touch with, uh, with the, our booking uh, agents. And uh, I also uh, write the song with, the Pier, with Pierluigi. So that is uh, the guitar player. And uh, it's also the founder of the band. Um, he, uh, Pierluigi uh, do also also Pierluigi does a, a lot of stuff like uh, first of all uh, writing songs but also the artworks uh, and uh, mm, he helped me when I I cannot do uh, the stuff you know you if you, if I need something he's, he's always there so sorry for my dogs. <laughs> 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 they are they want to be included in the, in the interview no problem <laughs> so and also our best player and the drummer um, is uh, are a part of the writing process because uh, uh, me and player me and Pierluigi came out with the ideas then we we go in the uh, rehearsal room and then we um, we put out the songs so they are also really important uh, for us. Okay, and what about uh, merch production, maybe shipping merch, like replying on social media? You do everything, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I know, because I, I don't know. So far, in every band, the vocalist take care, takes care of merch. I don't know why, but... <laughs> It's always like this. <laughs> yes, this is this is the case. All right. Um, I wanted actually to ask you, is there any specifics of being an Italian metal band, like a metal band from Italy? Is there something special like, um, I don't know. Uh, well, uh, when I'm on tour, when we are on tour, they always uh, do this. In Italy, <laughs> I don't know if... Uh, also, you've been in tour with uh, an Italian band of our friends, uh, some mom, uh, and uh, we always do, Marky boy, what do you want? Uh, also them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <there> so, <laughs> it's so funny because uh, uh, when we are when we were in tour with Dark Tranquility, their tour manager always say, Julia, Marky boy. <laughs> <laughs> in, in English is what do you want <laughs> so it's really fun also you know if you need something to be cooked they always say you are Italian you have, you have to cook because you know in Italy we uh, for, for us it's really important uh, the food uh, you know the tradition so uh, 
it's really fun be being an Italian band. <laughs> I know that um, like when the Italian bands are touring, it's very hard, you know, for the promoters to satisfy their need in food, in delicious food, you know, <laughs> because, you know, sometimes it's not the best food that we can have, you know. Uh, I know, I know. I'm, you know, because if uh, when you're in tour, you have to adapt, adapt everything. But for me, it's not a problem because I always uh, not eat before the show because, uh, uh, you know, we are singers. If I eat, uh, it, it will be difficult uh, to, to do the growl, the growl stuff because, uh, well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so I always uh, uh, eat uh, uh, cold food. So for me, it's the same. <laughs> I understand you. The same here. Like the only thing that I need to do is make sure that my dinner is still left after the show, <laughs> you know, because sometimes you you need to hide it carefully somewhere. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it, it happened to me, and uh, for it was a it was a tragedy because when you're in tour, uh, everything is difficult, you know, because. And if you don't have the food, what? Because if you're uh, if you are on the tour bus, uh, it's really it's really not easy to uh, to to find food. But uh, sometimes we were on the, our own car, so we can stop uh, to a, a, a restaurant or something. But if you, you are on a tour bus, uh, you can't stop the tour bus just because the singers have to eat. So. <laughs> Yes, so. <laughs> that's true. And if we started talking about like the singing stuff, uh, can you tell me when you started to grow and how did you learn like this specific technique? Um, I started like uh, five years ago uh, because I always been fascinated with the growlers. I, I always loved Pantera, for example. And uh, my favorite singer is uh, Corey Taylor. And I also loved the Angela Gossop of Archenemy when I was uh, little. Um, but I, I always been scared of uh, do the growl because uh, if you don't do it in, in the right way, you can ruin your voice. So for me, it was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm, I can do it. So I need someone who teach me. And uh, I, I found this, this guy that uh, is a doctor and he's also a metal singer. That uh, is he's, perfect. <laughs> oh yeah, God. it's perfect. He's, he's the best. He's Enrico Di Lorenzo uh, of the band uh, Ideos Divinity. I don't know if you um, heard about the band. He's really good growler. He's fantastic. He has, uh, he has this awesome voice, uh, but he's also a doctor. So... Uh, he teached me how to, to grow. It was great because uh, I, I wasn't scared just because of him. And uh, I'm a great student. I always study every morning, do the vocal warm up uh, and the grow practice. For me, it was really, uh, really important uh, to do it well. So, uh, and I still do every morning the vocal warm up. Uh, and uh, the growl because I don't want to lose that uh, that technique. So yeah, I uh, think that if you want to growl, you have to do it really regularly because even if you can, if you even if you're good yeah. at it, it's something like a gym. You have to stay fit with this pressure and everything. And um, yeah, that is really good advice. Yeah, I, it's like. like uh, yeah, it's like the gym. It's really like the gym. Really, the same. You need to train every day. <laughs> yes, yes. I'm really happy. Like we recently got this small room, uh, which is you know sound isolated, and I'm so glad that I can now grow like pretty good because like we live in an apartment in a where many apartments are. <laughs> And I'm so afraid to freak out my neighbors, and that's why yeah, I because can't... your growl uh, is really good and uh, past that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's loud in any case, you know. So like here, I'm so glad that I can properly train. Maybe not every day, but at least like every second day, I just come here and I growl with all my strengths, and it's yeah. 
kind of getting better, you know. It's maybe I can grow longer phrases or everything. So. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I also grow in my car. Oh. When I, I go around the group because uh, in my in my home it's, it's like you. So my neighbors always say, "What are you doing, Julia? <laughs> it's okay. Everything is okay." But I I go out with the car and. Uh, uh, some, uh, it happened to me that uh, uh, someone uh, near the other car saw me to gro growl, uh, and uh, they, scared, they were scared about this. So that's so funny. <laughs> A girl, they say, what? Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell happened with this girl? <laughs> but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Um, getting back uh, to the band, what I wanted to ask, uh, can you tell me about your relations with the label? I know that you're signed uh, to an Italian label, right? Yeah. So I want to ask, when did you start um, your cooperation? What do they handle for you? How it's been in general? Yeah, well, I used to work for the label, mm, Time to Kill Records. Uh, so everything was is, is great with them. I have this great relationship with Enrico and all this stuff. And they they always there. Uh, you know, it's difficult to find some uh, some label that uh, is always there for you. So uh, for me, it's great. Uh, and uh, uh, if uh, and I always say to the band that I know that if uh, you have to find a label, you need uh, to talk with them because uh, um, around the, uh, you can find a lot of labels. But if you don't have the relations with them, it, it will be difficult. You know, also uh, about uh, when this video will come out, uh, at uh, what time, uh, and uh, etc. So. Uh, for us, it was a great experience, and I also learned a lot because uh, doing with your for your band, uh, you do. The, I always do the best also for the other band, but for our, our band, the, you know, I I, I did the hundred per, percent more, also more. So it was really a great relation and a great experience. But what exactly do they do for you? I mean, because, you know, a lot of people think that label handles absolutely everything, you know. No, so it's important. I just want people to, to educate people about that, you know, like, no, no. is this label, is this, this is what artists do. Just in a few words. need to, to make a tutorial for this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that there are so many tutorials out there, but still people, I don't know, sometimes I hear from bands like, um, okay, we got signed by this label and this label will be working on our concerts. And I'm like, okay, concerts are handled by the booking agency. Oh, really? You know? So in a few words, what exactly do they do for you? Uh, mm, they uh, do all, all the distribution of the, of the album. And also the um, uh, press agency that was uh, great because we uh, they have uh, this uh, great uh, press agency for metal. So um, our uh, our work uh, um, went out uh, on a lot of uh, press, and, you know, a lot of webzine. But about the the booking now, we have another uh, another agency because uh, they're not the same, and uh, um, a lot of people really don't don't know the, this. Uh, some people ask, why don't you find us uh, um, live concerts? Because uh, it's not the work of the label. Mm -hmm. You need uh, you need to split the. A lot of the label also didn't uh, also doesn't have the uh, the press agency. So for us, it was great to have the a good press agency. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's really important. But you said that you do the social media on your yeah. own. So um, what I want to ask, um, just one moment. I have some questions listed here. Um, 
Uh, I wanted to ask, so um, I saw that you are really active out there, like on say, on Instagram, on Facebook. I wanted to ask if you do, like apart from usual posting, do you also do like Facebook advertising, like sponsored posts or something like that? Mm, yes, yes, of course, because uh, uh, now uh, on Facebook, if you don't advertise, your fan really don't see your post because... Uh, Uh, it's like if you have like ten uh, thousand likes, uh, just uh, um, the one percent see the organic post. But if you do the advertise, a lot of people, a lot of target uh, targeting people will see your post. So it's really important uh, to be seen on the social media. And now I'm working more on Instagram because. Uh, um, It, it, it's becoming better for bands, uh, uh, the, the Instagram uh, instead of Facebook. Because, uh, first of all, Instagram has a more organic uh, uh, reach mm -hmm. uh, instead of Facebook, that is 1%. And uh, I always say to, to the bands that they also have to see the, uh, the statistics of, uh, of their page because it's important to uh, to post uh, uh, at a certain time you know if you have people uh, the organic uh, for example uh, with five and we have like uh, 5 p.m the organic the, the organic reach uh, is better uh, so you have always to to see this uh, and try you know uh, our uh, mm, So, this is something really easy if you just uh, read uh, or uh, um, Facebook also has a lot of, uh, of material to study. So for me, because it's also, I also work with the, the social media, uh, but uh, for me, it's really important that, and to, to say to the bands, uh, look at these things because uh, you will reach more people. That for musicians, is the, it's really, you know, it's, it's important. You can't just post um, uh, three pictures uh, at 2 a.m. People will not see this. A lot yeah. of people do that. That is true. That is a really great point. I also noticed that um, your personal Instagram profile has more followers than the band. Yeah. Yeah, so, because I can post the stupid things that the people like. And with Fiverr, I, could, I can do this. You know, I'm, I'm always like, oh, look at my dog. I, I can do this with Fiverr. I also like, I have also like my personal Instagram and the band's Instagram. I also, I struggle a lot if I have some content, what to post where. Ah to find the balance and I even I try to make a content plan for me for example to post like on my Instagram in one day and then the next day on the bands because it's I don't know it's a lot of work and it's yeah, so it's hard it's insane it's insane it's really yes, insane and I always I always think <laughs> okay there are people who follow the band and me as well that's true that's true make it different and it's like hmm <clears throat> Yeah, that's true. In fact, if I post with the band and uh, an hour later with my profile, the, that post will not have a lot of likes. So maybe you could do two different pictures, uh, you know, like uh, two poses and post it in the different uh, uh, social media, uh, you know, different pages. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I try to personalize my account and uh, with my account, I don't think about what to do. Just do it. But with Fiverr account, I have uh, uh, a diary of what to post and when. With mine not, I, I really don't care. Just uh, if I want, I, I post the pictures of my dog, of, uh, of everything. Um, but with Fiverr, I need to um, to follow uh, some rules. For for example, I I don't I, um, I also uh, uh, post the pictures of my band. You know, one time of the guitar player, one time of the bass player, one time of the drummer. And I always say to them, 
give me some content, please. Come on, give me some content. I can't do just my pictures. And they, oh no, I don't want to do it. And when we are on tour, I always make pictures of them and not of me, of course, because I can't always do selfies. <laughs> Oh, it's insane because you know I think that it, that woman are uh, oh I have this uh, um, uh, always this uh, this uh, you know it's a characteristic of the female fronted band that uh, the woman always try to do the best better and better and better maybe because we need to demonstrate something I don't know sometimes they ask me why you always try to do the best the best the best I don't know it's uh, for me it's uh, the reason of life my band so uh, I, I become uh, really obsessive with uh, with stuff maybe too much I don't know because I also um, left my personal life just to think about the band, about the album, about the tour. And this year was insane because we couldn't do anything. We, we had planned a lot of tours, a lot of festivals, and I saw my world just, you know, crumble. <laughs> so I for me, I also also, have like. Yeah two tours already like I even don't know if they will be postponed you know because like it's kind of complicated so yeah and by the way like this year what have you been focusing on like as a band because I know in Italy there was a very severe lockdown for quite a long time and how did you manage what did you do with the band instead of touring that didn't happen Mm, well, uh, we are trying to, we are just writing our new album, uh, but uh, maybe also we, we, we've we lost a lot of time doing nothing because we are expe expecting <coughs> something. Well, what, what we have to do? I don't know what. We, we couldn't plan because we don't have the... Um, the view, the a big view of uh, the future. So maybe we also lose a lot of time. Uh, but to, it's okay. It's an it's an experience. Maybe um, maybe this uh, will give us something more the next year. And I really hope that the next year will bring us something because uh, I hope of uh, you know the the. Uh, in English, is vaccine, but the, yeah. the cure. Okay. Maybe will be our um, uh, the the thing that will change everything. So maybe next year, a lot of people will go to the concerts because also in Italy. I don't, I don't, it, it, did you play in Italy? Just uh, when yeah. we were oh. once in <laughs> Italy, it's strange. It's metal music is really strange. Maybe you can go to uh, a venue and find a lot of people then the the day later uh, the day later you, you will find anybody instead of a uh, place like germany where you always find people that love your your music so yeah germany is perfect for touring if you're a metal band i don't know what's yeah. what's happening there but it's like Always super cool experience. Uh, amazing. I've been there. Also the people. The yeah. People are, yeah. Yeah. But do you have, like right now, any concerts planned for the next year? Yeah, we have uh, Hills of Rock Festival that uh, I really hope that will happen because we will play with Slipknot that it's my favorite band. It's really, I really love Slipknot. Yeah. So for me, it's like a dream. <laughs> and also I'm on Amart, for, like the best band, uh, I really love them. So, and also we are trying, uh, mm, they're calling us for some tour around Europe. So hope that this will happen. <laughs> I hope so too. Well, I heard that um, the vaccine from coronavirus, for example, they started already doing this in the United States just yesterday or something like that. So, I mean, 
I hope that it will just simply roll out and we will get back to all these concerts because I don't know, we released a new album this year, like in spring. Oh my and God. We were, I, I don't know. And right now we are writing new music because we cannot go, you know, we cannot make a year without a release, but we cannot do another full length album. Yeah. So it's like, what? Because, uh, you know, we always, when you tour, uh, when you're in tour, the albums, you say, the, you, you sell the album in tour, especially in tour, when we are, uh, so, uh, I just imagine how how could be uh, it's it was really difficult for you and your band because uh, you expect uh, to be in tour and then you are not because you meet a lot of people that uh, uh, it's a real promotion the touring so hope that uh, that you, next year you can uh, sell your albums <laughs> come on. Yes, I hope so too. I really, I think that touring is great, you know, for new crowds as well, because you tour with other bands, because like we have beautiful fans who have supported us. They bought, you know, they supported us uh, to fund this album. They are buying the records, oh, but at the same time, you know, there is a limit and you need to go out there on tour and play with other bands and, you know, make other people hear you and see you. And this is how it goes. And yeah, it's it's a very strange time that we have now. So I hope that it will change. Yes, it will change. It will <laughs> change. <Yes. laughs> so I actually don't have any questions prepared, uh, but I think that it was a great conversation, you know, very, you know. It was up- really fun for me, really, really fun for me. Yeah, for me as well. So uh, thank you once again.